Hallelujah. I'm living for the Lord. I'm loving the Lord. And I'm on my way to heaven. But they say, Murray's, I'm getting up tonight. Hallelujah. I'm just going to rise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Always oh, somebody lift your voice. You ought to just lift your voice. Hallelujah. They say, Murray's, I'm going to rise tonight. I'm going to get back up. I'm going to rise. Hallelujah. I'm going to rise. I'm going to rise out of, out of condemnation. I'm going to get up from this old depression. I'm going to get up from this discontentment. I'm going to get up from this nervousness. My past is dead. I can't change it. I can't undo it. I can't fix it. It's dead. I've reaped some things. I've been through some things. But I've got to rise. I've got to rise. I've got to rise. Turn around and just touch somebody or smile at somebody. Tell them they come a time you just got to get up. There come a time you just got to get up. The second thing listed this. This is the second time I preach this. I preached this early this morning. A preacher called me and I, I, I said, Look here what I'm getting out of this. Then David arose from the earth and he washed. While you're in this little Pentecostal service tonight, let this word I'm preaching, let it wash you. We're washed with the washing by the Word. Hallelujah. Jesus wants you to feel clean again. Hallelujah. He wants you to feel, hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's not the Lord that's telling you you're not worthy to be healed. It's not the Lord that's telling you you're not fit to be blessed. It's not Jesus that's telling you you don't deserve your miracle. Hallelujah. If we got what we deserve, we'd all be on our way to hell. There's none righteous. No, not one. Hallelujah. The only one of us is clean except through the blood. The blood, 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 the blood. I was in the mountains of West Virginia with Golden Napper. Goldie stands about this tall, close to 90 years old. You cannot touch her life. Every morning, Goldie's on her knees from about 9 to 11 o'clock. Every morning, except church morning. Every morning. Goldie won't even go in Walmart. She don't think it's wrong, but she loves that stuff and he gets her mind off of Jesus. And she won't even go in a store. Go, 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 Goldie won't even have her picture made because she said, I like that stuff and I don't, I don't want anything. I don't want anything that, 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 that make me proud or make me, that, that's Goldie. And you, 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 the doctors told Goldie in 52, said your husband's going to die in just two or three days. She called the church folk. She said, everybody going a three day fast. The doctor said, my husband's going to be dead in two or three days and ain't nothing they can do. But there's a God. Hallelujah. About, 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 40, about 45 years later, I sat in there preaching. There sat little old brother Napper. Hallelujah. Doctor said he'd live three days, but a little old church began to fast and pray. And 40 some years later, you just can't touch her life. I've had her pray for our family and God worked miracles. But Goldie stood there weeping one night. She, she, she said, If I lose, let it be on this side. Don't let me lose over yonder. And she said, There's one thing that scares me. She said, The Bible said, If the righteous scarcely be saved. She he said, doing everything I can to go to heaven. I'm only going to make it by the grace of God. Doing everything I can to please Him. I'm only going to make it by the grace of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody needs to wash yourself tonight and realize I'm clean by the Word of God. I'm clean by the Spirit of God. I can't clean myself. I can't wash myself. But the blood of Jesus has made me clean. Oh, I wish somebody would magnify Him. David rose. David washed himself. Devil wants to make you think you're dirty and you're awful and you're no good, but the devil is a liar. The third thing David did, David anointed himself. I don't know what it takes to get you anointed. I like it. The Lord helps me when my spirit breaks. If I get hurt or hard or cold, if I can find a certain tape or a certain song or something that will break my spirit, and if I can just, just, just get by myself, or I don't care if I'm in a crib by myself, if I can just, just, just weep before the Lord, just, just, 
just a few days ago, Sheila and I, just two of us was going summers. And, and I just want the Lord to touch me. And, and I've just been reaching out for the area of my heart. And I, Sheila got out of the car to go summers. And I'm going through the parking lot. And in, in a, just in a second of time, in a second of time, Jesus, this, this was about a week ago, in a second of time, just felt like Jesus sat down in my automobile and I began to weep. And, 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 I, and, I, and I found me a place out there at the other side of the parking lot. And I sat there for about ten minutes and just weeped and I cried. And I thought, Lord, this is what I've been needing for a day or two. Hallelujah. And I just, I just sat there telling him, I love you, Jesus. And I don't ever want to lose your presence. And I love you, Jesus, and I need you. I love you, Jesus, and don't hide your face from him. I love you, Jesus, and don't ever leave me too far alone. And I need you. I desire you and I want you. Whatever it takes for you to get anointed. If you're by yourself and you sing Amazing Grace and get anointed, sing it till you get anointed. If you, if you kneel on your knees and pray, if you go to church and get anointed, if you get around preaching and get anointed, if you get in these altars and get anointed, after you come out of a hard place, get up and wash yourself and let the Lord anoint you again. Let the good Spirit of the Lord fall on you again. Betty Jean Robertson, last time, time for last, she was here, she made a statement. She said, sometimes I just need you to shout me, Lord. Sometimes I just need you to let me feel your good spirit. You ever have some time in your life, you just need to feel the spirit of the Lord. Get anointed. And David anointed himself. I want to talk to you about this. And David changed his apparel or his garment. Zechariah, the third chapter, he answered him and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with a change of rain. Somebody in this service tonight, God is ordained to change your raiment tonight. Isaiah said, take off the spirit of heaviness, hallelujah, and put on a garment of praise, hallelujah. I don't know who I'm talking to, but somebody loves the Lord, but your spirit's been heavy. I mean, I mean, it's just like a gloomness, a heaviness that's settled on your spirit. But the Lord Jesus tonight, hallelujah, I need to stop preaching for just a moment. Would you lift your little hands to heaven? Would, hallelujah, would you just say, Lord, hallelujah, I, 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 I want you to carry a burden. I want you to keep a burden. But as your pastor, I'm going to fight. You don't need to run around with the spirit of heaviness. You don't need to walk around with the spirit of gloom. you now got time to be depressed. You need to enjoy the journey to heaven. Hallelujah. In fact, this is important. Hallelujah. Somebody tonight, I feel an anointing in here. God's not wanting you to go around with the spirit of heaviness on you. If you got a burden, that's one thing. But if you're just heavy because of the, the weight of the load, Jesus wants to lift it tonight. And He's wanting to give you back a spirit of praise, a spirit of heaven. Hallelujah. A spirit of joy. A spirit of victory. And he changed his apparel. Oh, I got to stay on this a minute. Yeah. I, I, I've seen some Christian folk that thought it was godly to be beat down all the time. That thought it was godly to be in a storm all the time. He's your father. He loves you. I don't want my children to be depressed. I want them to reverence me, love me, obey me. And I want them to be interested in what I feel is right for them to do. And I want them to do it wholeheartedly. And I believe, the, I believe that's all Jesus is asking of us. Catch His heart. Catch His vision. And He does want us to weep and pray and have a burden. But there's a large difference between a burden and just a spirit of heaviness. And tonight, I, I just feel like talking to somebody's spirit. The Lord don't want you just carrying a spirit of heaviness. Hallelujah. He wants you to feel things, show you things, reveal things to you. But He wants to lift your spirit and bless your spirit. Strengthen your spirit. Hallelujah. The, the fifth thing I want to talk to you about is how to get back up from your past. And in 2 Samuel 12 and 20, And He came unto the house of the Lord. The Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord wants you to commit tonight to the work of God. 
the Lord's wanting you to commit tonight. Make up your mind. Hallelujah. I'm going. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. About, about, about between one and two this morning, the Lord has talked to me about this as I sat right. Hallelujah. There's somebody in this service tonight. The Lord's wanting to tell you. Hallelujah. Church ought to have a priority in your life. Church ought to be important in your life. The house of God where you meet with your Savior. Hallelujah. 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 Would you help me? Would you reach over and just touch somebody or join hands with somebody? Hallelujah. Would you ask the Lord God, Lord Jesus, let me feel the importance tonight. Hallelujah. Cause me to feel the importance tonight. Hallelujah. Because of my past, because of my hurt, my storm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I must get back up. I must wash myself. I must get anointed again. Hallelujah. I must change my raiment. And I must commit tonight to the how I feel the Lord speaking to somebody's heart in this service tonight. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. The devil knows you start getting in church. Something's going to break off of you. A new fire is going to start burning in you. The Spirit of the Lord's going to raise up inside of you. And the Lord's wanting to give somebody a new beginning tonight. I said the Lord's wanting to give somebody a new beginning tonight. The Lord's wanting to close some doors in your life. The Lord's wanting to seal some chapters in your life. The Lord, it's springtime. Just like it's springtime in Tennessee, I feel springtime. New beginnings, new flowers, new laughter, new joy in somebody's life. I feel it in the house, friend. Would somebody clap your hand? I feel it in the house tonight. I said, I feel what I'm preaching in the house tonight. And the last thing David did, and he worshipped. Everything I'm saying to you, nothing's going to change. Nothing's going to be different if you don't get back a spirit of worship. Now, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Brother Wynn, I'm feeling pretty good tonight. I think I'm going to worship Him a little bit. And that's good. And I appreciate that. And I know the Lord will honor it. But when it's going to really turn around, it's when you don't feel good and you say, I'm going to worship Him anyway. For something really going to turn in your life is when you're Abraham and you're walking up towards Yonder's Mountain. And, and, and you've got your little old boy by your side and you know you're probably not, might not going to see him. You're going to cut his throat and he's going to kick and scream and bleed. And, the, and your buddies, your servant's going to say, where are you going? And we say, say we're going yonder to worship the Lord. And they say, well, we're not going with you to worship. We'll stay here with the donkeys. And you make up your mind, if you don't go with me, I'll worship Him by myself. Hallelujah. 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 I, 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 I've got a good message to preach tonight. I've not come to, to this pulpit with a rod to correct anybody but this church would go to another level on Sunday night and Tuesday night and Sunday morning instead of when we start praising if we just cross our arms and look at each other if we'd go to these altars and begin to walk these altars and say Lord I don't know what anybody else is going to do I don't know how much they love you but on account of you I'm not on my way to hell on account of you I'm not in a mental institution on account of you my family's still together on account of you I still got my right mind I don't feel nothing but time I'm a little sick, but I'm going to worship you because I've come into your house. And I'm, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I wish one person would stand to your feet and make up your mind. If God's going to give me a new beginning, I'm going to give Him a new beginning. And I'm going to start worshiping Him the way He deserves. I'm going to start worshiping Him the way He deserves. I'm going to start worshiping Him the way He's worthy. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Sheila, I, I could not have a more precious sister. You pray for me. You weep for me and you respect me. But I'll go to another level of worship when I make up my mind. I don't care if Sheila thinks I'm a fanatic. She's my sister. I'm not worried about these things between me and Jesus. Hallelujah. My sister do anything she could for me. But when I was nine years old and the doctor said, John, when this little boy's going to die, Sheila didn't heal me. Hallelujah. My storm. Hallelujah. 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 Hey, listen, friend, listen. There's a move coming that's going outside of these walls. I believe right at the return of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, 
I believe there's a move coming, hallelujah, where the anointing's going to return again, where the power of God's going to return again. But they no need to telling yourself you're going into hospitals and heal the sick when you can't even worship God among people that love you. Ain't no need to kidding yourself that you're going to walk up and down the streets and witness to the lost when you can't even get free and worship the Lord among people that love you and put the Lord among people that love you and believe in you and respect you. If this morning's going to go outside of these four walls, you ought to get free in the house of God in the next few services, in the next few weeks. Say, I'm going to shout again. I'm going to worship again. I'm going to speak in tongues again. I'm going to mind up a rest of the Bahia. Hallelujah. You can't get me out of my storm. I'm tired of worrying that I'm going to be embarrassed. I'm tired of worrying what you think about me. You have nothing to do with my salvation. I'm covered by the blood. I'm bought by the blood. I'm purchased by the blood. I'm redeemed by the blood. Like it or not, I'm going to worship Him. I'm going to bless Him. I'm going to exalt Him. I'm not going to let Jesus walk in this room. Feel the presence. He comes in this place. I'm going to worship Him. I'm going to exalt Him. I'm going to magnify Him. I'm going to bless Him. Hallelujah. 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 I think I've just preached a little message tonight, but I've got a word of the Lord. There's some folk in this service sitting here smiling. And you're unhappy the way things are going on in your home. You're so unsatisfied the way things are going on in your home. And you've been praying and seeking God for some things to change. And listen, after David worshipped, after he worshipped, he came to his own house. And he, when, he, when he required, they set bread before him and he did eat. Ain't nothing going to change in your home till something changes in you. Ain't nothing going to change in your home till you get your heart stirred again. Ain't nothing going to change in your family till you get the barretta higher, till you get the fire burning again. I wish somebody would help me worship the Lord. What did I do, preacher? you got to get up tonight. you got to make up your mind. i got to get back up. If God touched me one time, He can touch me again. i got to stop for a minute. Nathaniel, I want to tell you. Jeff, I want to tell you. Shelly, I want to tell you. Any night you're on these cameras and you feel like shouting, take off. How did it run by itself? Any night you're on these cameras, you feel like coming to these altars, take off. They'll run by themselves. Any time Hallelujah, hallelujah. I feel an anointing in here. And if you get in with the anointing, that's when your heart gets touched. That's when your spirit gets healed. That's when your mind gets mended. That's when the anointing gets in your life again. So somebody, hallelujah, I, I, I'm going to make a different type of altar call I've ever made. If this word spoke to you tonight, if there's some area in your life you need to get back up, I just challenge you to stand to your feet right now. Any area of your life, your family, your head, hey, 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 hallelujah, hallelujah. I know I'm, hallelujah. God's let me see some things I want. He's let me see, hallelujah, some storms I've been through in ministry and stuff. He's telling me just close some doors and let go of it and get back up. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Now would you lift your hands and would you raise your voice? Say, Word of God, wash me tonight. Spirit of God, wash me tonight. I feel so much life in this service. I'm prophesying. I'm prophesying new beginnings. Under the anointing of God. I'm prophesying. I'm prophesying newness in your spirit. Under the anointing of God. I'm prophesying to some men and women. I'm prophesying to some young folk in this service. I'm prophesying. Son, it's not over. God's not thrown you away. He's not forsaken you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're not going back. You're not going back. God's not going to... I'm prophesying to you. I'm prophesying life into you. I'm telling you bones live again. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. He that started a work in you. He's going to finish it. He's going to complete it. Now beg the anointing of the Lord. You don't have to shout like somebody else. You don't have to cry like somebody. But close your eyes and ask the anointing of the Lord to start touching you for the next few days. He anointed Himself. 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 
He anointed Himself. He anointed Himself. He anointed Himself. He, hallelujah. Lord, I did the fire. Spirit of God. Spirit of God. Spirit of God. Spirit of God. She, she lay your hands on that widow. She didn't come out of that Go with her. Not my dead, 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 Hallelujah. 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 Friends, I prophesied in this service. Now, I don't say this, but I'm telling you, they some men and women in here. It's a springtime in your spirit. There's something lifted in your spirit. Hallelujah. There's some sore places healing in your spirit. He changed his raiment. He changed his raiment. I wouldn't embarrass you for anything in the world. But it, but if you'll reverence this anointing tonight, I believe God will move for you. They, 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 they several people here, your spirit's just heavy. Would you come and stand in these altars and let me pray with you? Your spirit just heavy. Just been through some stuff and your spirit just heavy. Lord, anoint me tonight. Anoint me tonight, Lord. Anoint me tonight. David changed his raiment. He changed his garments. Hallelujah. You ought to be honest tonight. If you'll be honest, God will move for you. Hallelujah. 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 If you've not had a great desire to come to church, could it, could it be your spirit? Your spirit's got heavy. If you haven't struggled breaking through in worship, could it be that the weight of life has made your spirit heavy? If, you, if you've been struggling in your prayer, could it be that the burdens of life have made your spirit heavy? Hallelujah. If you've been having trouble feeling the peace of God, could it be that the enemy's made your spirit heavy? I want three godly women quickly to come and stand behind Brenda. I could point you out. But they, they ought, two or three more ought to come and stand. God will move for you if you'll come. God will move for you. Just come and say, Lord, I want a, I want a praise back tonight. I want a joy back. I want a laughter in my spirit. Hallelujah. I just want to, I just want to be, I just want to be on fire. I just want to go to heaven. I want to help somebody. Two or three brothers or young people come and stand with her and quickly come. Somebody help me. Some of you young folk come and stand. John's come on, did out of Ohio. Come on, John. Come on. Somebody come and help me in the name of Jesus. 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 Lord, I need you tonight. God, I want life to be good for me and Sheila. And I want life to be good for my boys. And I want life to be good for this church. And I want life to be good for this people. But life can't be good at home if my heart's not tender before God. Life can't be good if possible. My spirit's all wounded and broken. Life can't be good, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. Lord, take off a garment of heaviness. Just take off a pearl, a garment of heaviness. And give Eric back a garment of praise. A garment of joy. Covered by the blood. 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 Redeem back to our God. Redeem back to our God. We're covered, we're covered, we're covered, we're covered, we're covered. My Father, my Father, my Father, my Father, my Father. Shalom, stay here a second. Brenda, lift your hands again. I, I, won't, even, I won't even say it was a vision, but it, like just right then I just saw you, Brenda. And it's different times your little hand was about to drop. I saw just a great, just a great, like a dark burden on your shoulders. And some of these little women and brothers here, I just saw, I wish two or three would just hold her hands up. 
Hallelujah. We're at the end of this thing. I just saw it slipping off your shoulder. Tonight, Lord. Tonight, Jesus. Tonight, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Uh, no, no. Brenda, would you, would you just wrap this on? You're slipping on. Would somebody just wrap this around her? God tonight. Lord, Brenda's part of this family. She's part of this church. And, and I'm asking for a change of raiment tonight. I'm asking for this old raiment of heaviness. This old Maretta da 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 Bahia. Hallelujah. God, this old thing just says it's never going to change. And it's always going to be like this. God, da 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 Somebody pray. Somebody pray. Appreciate the Lord. Hallelujah. Appreciate the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for Sunday. You folk outdid yourself. You were so kind to us. Thank you. Thank you. Had the most awesome day in the food and your gift, your kindness. You you were so kind to me and Sheila, John and Micah. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Appreciate the Lord. Appreciate what I feel in here. Anybody just feel a pre- something precious in here? A L- little bit different tonight. It's a little little bit different. Your Dell folks say it's real thick tonight. <laughs> Did you ever hear anybody say that? I hear that some of the folks say it feels real thick and you just feel him real close or real strong. Jason, you're my neighbor, but you're my friend, and it give him a hand clap. Bless you. Just glad everyone's here. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to St. Mark, the 8th chapter. I was a little kid and I'd be out playing. My mama holler said, you better come and eat while it's hot. So uh, this one's hot tonight, friend. It ain't, listen, just from, just, just from the presence of the Lord. I like warmed overs, but I like that first time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Call somebody and remind them about the broadcast in the morning. The uh, 8.30 in the morning on channel 5 or 53. If you have your Bibles, the book of St. Matthew, the 8th chapter. The 8th chapter. The 23rd verse. Hallelujah. Let's start reading the 22nd verse. And he cometh to Bethesda, and there being a blind, and they bring in a blind man unto him, and besought him to touch him. Now listen. And he took the blind man by the hand, and led him out of the city, or out of the town. And when he had spit in his eyes, put his hand upon him, he asked him if he now if he saw again. And he looked up and said, I see man is trees walking. After that he put his hands again upon his eyes and made him look up and he was restored and saw every man clearly. He sent him away to his house saying, Neither go on to the town 
nor tell it to any in the town. And Jesus went out. Father, anoint thy servant this night, I pray, to speak to the heart of this people. Amen. Amen. We started something here a while back, preaching on a man of God. We called it part one. I said, next few weeks, God's going to let me add to this. And I want to talk to the ministers. And I love what God's doing. And I want to talk to our, we got some ministers here. I want to speak to everybody. But I want to show you some stuff that's going on in the ministry in America. And I, I, I want to title this tonight, The Second Touch. You, you might want to get a copy of this. At Andy and someone will see after church. There will be some available. But I, I began to look at this and kind of pick this apart today and, and just kind of... I'd, I'd come up here, they worked on our system today, and then I changed the light bulbs and I prayed and just pressed the Lord in a simple way dropped in today. And I was reaching for Him and there's a desire in my heart to get closer to Jesus. But I, but I saw the ministry in here right now. I looked up this town, and it was the original home of Philip, of Andrew, and Peter. It showed that this town was tied in with ministry. And, and I began to think about the blindness. And I saw how blindness was tied in with ministry. In, in, in Matthew 15 and 14, If the blind lead the blind, they shall both fall into the ditch. And, and I... I, I I feel too much mercy here. I don't want to sound hateful. Not, but how many know we got too many blind leading the blind in our nation? Isaiah 59 and 10. We grope for the wall like the blind. And we grope as if we had no eyes. Second Chronicles 4 and 4. Or Second Corinthians 4 and 4. In whom the gods of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not. How many know what the God of this world is in the ministry? It's mainly money. Power, fame, carnal glory. And it's blinded people. It, it, it's so consumed people, they're afraid to preach the Bible. Preachers are, so, too many preachers are blinded. They, they, they've got to be blind. Too many people are just preaching on money all the time and on happiness and victory and what, 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 oh, it's good and it sounds good. It needs to be preached. But somebody needs to preach on how is it with your soul. I don't care how much money you got if you're not ready to die. I, I, I don't care if you die happy or sad. If you go to heaven, who cares? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Care if you die? I don't care if you die in the fiery furnace or, or in, in the nicest bed. If you make it to heaven, everything's okay. So some of this other stuff's good. When the old prophet saw the woman coming, he didn't, he didn't cry out, you know, I'm going to give you ten steps how to get rich. He said, is it, is it well with you? Is it well with you? In other words, is everything okay between you and God? Is it, is, is it well with your husband? Is it well with that little old boy? 23, verse 23. He led him out of town. I'm, I'm talking to the ministers here. I'm talking to myself. Sheila just said it. I knew it was on time. Sheila, we didn't talk this evening. This is my sister. We didn't talk this evening. He led him out of town. Preachers, we need some time alone with Jesus. We're not, we're not going to be effective if we don't get out of town every once in a while. We, we, we're not going to get a real touch if we don't get alone with Jesus every once in a while. Thank God when we thank God for these Monday mornings we pray together. You, you all be meeting here Thursday night at seven o'clock praying. Thank God for the Thursday nights we pray together. Thank God for the Sundays and Tuesdays somebody comes a little early and stays a little late. But every once in a while you need to get along with God and pray. Every once in a while you need to get out of the town. Hallelujah. Hey, every once in a while. Hallelujah. Satan can't, I wrote this down. Sure, you said that Satan can't get you drunk. He's just as happy to get you busy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He don't care if he keeps you out of the presence of God drunk or if he just keeps you out at Walmart. He don't care if he keeps you out of the presence of God with a needle in your hand or just mowing grass and washing dishes and, and, and doing things and just taking care of the yard, taking care of your house, taking care of everything. He just don't want you in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to reach for the Lord in here. Hallelujah. But Jesus is wanting to get somebody by the hand and lead them out of the town tonight. Hallelujah. I hear the Master calling somebody aside. I, I, was, I was praying this. I felt happy. I just, I just felt it in the presence of the Lord. But, but the, uh, you, you seen some of my old, old westerns? The old guy, he'll hang his thumb on his belt and he'll say, If you ain't out of town by noon, I'm coming after you. Turn around and grin at somebody tell them, Get out of town by noon, or the devil's coming after you. 
If you don't get in the presence of God, the storm's coming. If you don't get in the presence of God, the battle's coming. If you don't get in the presence of God, hallelujah. But if you'll get in the presence of God, hallelujah. If you seek Him early, you'll find Him. If you'll draw nigh to God, He'll draw nigh to you. Hallelujah. I, I like the story of the old farmer. They hired him out west. He hired, a, a guy came hitchhiking to him. He hired him to work on his farm. and said one of the best workers he ever had. And he said, he said tornadoes had come through and high winds had come through. And he said one night the storm was coming. He turned on the radio and it said a horrible storm will be here in about two hours. It's 11 o'clock. He runs out. He's banging on the bunkhouse door and tells the old helper, get up, get up. He said, I'm tired. I'm not getting up. He said, you got to get up. He said, I'm tired. I can't get up. He said, why, why do we need to get up? He said, he said the storm's coming. we got to lock up the chickens. we got to get the cows in the barn. we got to cover the hay wagon. He said, I'm not getting up. He said, I thought you was the best hand I've ever had. He said, why don't you get up? He said, I don't have to get up. He said, he said, every evening when I get in, I close up the chickens. I put the cows up. I cover up the hay wagon. He said, I don't have to get up at the last minute. I'm ready for the storm. Hallelujah. 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 1952 in the Korean conflict, my daddy was stationed out in Hot Springs, Arkansas. The old corporal come and got daddy. He said, Preacher, we've been watching your life. He said, we're going to have a Thanksgiving dinner. He said, these boys, wives and mothers and families coming in from all over the nation. He said, they're going to be people of class there. He said, we, we watch you. We want you to pray over the food. He said, get your prayer ready. Daddy said, I turned around and grinned at him and said, Sir, I don't have to get a prayer ready. I'm already prayed through. Hallelujah. 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 So I need to tell somebody again, it's time to get out of town. Hallelujah. It's time to take your Bible and go to your car on the lunch break again. It's time to get up five minutes early. It's time riding down the road. Turn the radio off. Hallelujah. Turn Anthony's tape off. Turn Jerry or David or Tim or Andy's CD off. Hallelujah. Say, Jesus, I just want to get in your presence a few minutes. You said if I draw nigh to you, you draw. You said if I'd seek you early. I want to get out of town. I want to get in your presence. Listen to this. 1 Kings 17, 19, Elijah took that little old dead child alone to the loft. And he laid him on his bed and he got down and he breathed on him and he cried out to God. That little old child sneezed and got up. Enoch walked alone with God. A- 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 Adam and the voice of God would come to the garden of cool of the day and he'd walk with Adam. Abraham was called a friend of God. God's fixing to kill everybody. No words, Noah, just God Noah. God says, I think I'll give him another chance. Hallelujah. And I could almost shout right then. One man got alone with God. He found grace and God said, I'm going to give the world another chance. I wonder if you'd get alone with God, would he give your family another chance? I wonder if somebody here would get along with God, would he give Tennessee or America another chance. I wonder if somebody get along in here. But God sent revival to the church one more time. It don't take a million. It don't take a church full. It takes one person that will get along with God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This thing's more than getting a microphone in our hand. It's more than preaching from the pulpit. we got to get in the presence of God. we got to get something from God. We got Hallelujah. If we're going to stand before people, we got to learn to kneel before God. David Learn if he get along with God when the bear and the wolf and the lion comes to devour the flock, God will anoint him. Isaiah, Jeremiah got along with God. Second Kings 4.33, Elisha's alone with God. Listen to this, Matthew 14.23, Jesus is alone praying. Matthew 15.29, Matthew 17.1, Mark 6.31, Mark 7.24, Luke 9 and 10, Luke 22 and 9. Jesus is alone praying. Hallelujah. I'll be somewhere listening. I'll just steal away. I'll just steal away. Where He leads me, I will follow. I can hear the Master calling. Take up your cross and follow me. I wish seven or eight people lift your hands up and say, Lord, Draw me to your presence. Hallelujah. Draw me to your presence. And don't take hours at a time. Four or five minutes on your way to work in the presence of God. Two or three minutes coming home in the presence of God. Just stop. And he took the blind man by the hand. <coughs> Let him out of the town. When he had spit, spit in his eyes. I, I got thinking about that. I thought, that's humbling. That'd break your pride. I'm begging you, men of God, women of God, I'm begging you. There's so much pride in the ministry in America. 
look who we are. Look who we are. We're sinners saved by grace. We're nothing. We're just a messenger. We didn't die for nobody. We didn't bleed for nobody. He takes His precious Spirit away from us. We can't help nobody. We can't heal nobody. We can't save nobody. We can't deliver nobody. It's God. Hallelujah. How to God be the glory. I wish every, I wish every anointed person would lift your hands up. Say, God, everything you do to me, through me, God be the glory. Hallelujah. I wish somebody, hallelujah. I wish somebody cried out in here. I wish every singer, every testifier, every shouter, every preacher, every man, woman of God, every daughter of God, anybody that's anointed God, used to God, I wish you'd lift your hands. Everything God you do to me, through me, God be the glory. Somebody, hallelujah. Everybody I talk to at work, God be the glory. Everybody I encourage, God be the glory. Everybody Everybody I pull out of hell, God be the glory. Everybody that gets healed, God be the glory. Every home that gets touched, God be the glory. Every life that gets touched, God be the glory. Every hallelujah. Every drunk or delivered, God be the glory. Every drug addict set free, God be the glory. Every, every homosexual delivered, God be the glory. God be the glory. It's not Anthony, it's not David, it's not Jerry, it's not Andy, it's not Till, it's not Sharon, it's the Hallelujah. God be the glory. 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 Oh, somebody said out loud to God be the glory. That's this awesome God be the glory. This great God be the glory. We're, you can write it down. I feel like we're right on the edge of something. I feel like we're right on the edge of a cliff looking over to the miraculous. The spoken word and the anointing that, that, that our generation, Brother Branham sought, Brother Allen sought, our generations never saw the anointing. We're fixing to see. And, and we'll lose it real quick if we start touching the glory. We'll lose it real quick if we start trying to straighten our shoulders. But if we'll humble ourselves, hallelujah, every time somebody, he'll say to God be the glory. Every time something turns around, God be the glory. Every time something breaks, God be the glory. Every time he, he fixes a, a, a trailer's about to come off of the hook, God be the glory. Every Every time He stops a bullet, God be the glory. Every time He heals a home, God be the glory. Every time He breaks a fever, God be the glory. Every time He changes a doctor's report, God be the glory. Every time a cancer leaves, God be the glory. God be the glory. God be the glory. I know somebody ought to worship Him right now. Somebody ought to bless Him. We owe it all to You, Jesus. We owe it all to You, Jesus. We owe it all to You. Too much self's crept in. And then he let him out of the city. He spit on his eyes. And then he touched him. And we're going to talk about this a little bit. I've been speaking too loud and I've been trying not to. I've been speaking out of turn and the Holy Ghost has convicted me. David cried, I'll not touch the Lord's anointing. Many people are still not right. I I ain't going to say too much, but I don't mind telling you. I see some of these preachers, and you know stuff. You know they sleeping around, they're doing stuff. It tires me up, friend. Fooling people. Ain't nobody fooling God. Ain't nobody fooling God. Ain't nobody fooling God. Hallelujah. 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 David cried, God's touched Saul. I don't know what's going on in Saul now, but I'm not going to touch God's anointing. If God's big enough to raise him up, God's big enough to take him down. He's in God's hand, but I'm not going to touch. I could kill him right now. I know he's a not, a not a good leader of Israel, but I didn't raise him up, and I'm not going to take him down. Oh, somebody don't hear what I'm saying right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Samson had a touch, but he messed up. David, Peter, I can tell you man after man I had touches, but they messed up. Hallelujah. And he looked around. He had one touch. Now, I, I never saw this till, till just now. He had one touch, and he said, I see men as trees. I see them as trees. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, 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 God, help me preach this. we got too many great, precious, 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 great men of God. They've had a great touch of God, but they need to go back for, to a second chance because they only see man as trees. Hallelujah. Too many people only see man as trees. Hallelujah. I, I, I turn on my TV and listen to some folks preaching. I realize you only see men as trees. Hallelujah. You get around some people and talk to them and they've had a real touch of God in their life, but they only see men as trees. 
Hallelujah. Jesus didn't give up on him. He touched him again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of us need to go back for a second touch. I don't, I don't know about you. Hallelujah. Before, before midnight comes here, I'm begging the Lord, God, give me that second touch. Hallelujah. And I'll not just see men as trees, but I'll see men clear as they really are. Listen to this. Genesis 3 and 6. This is the carnal. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eye, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat. When she saw that the tree was good for food. I'm going to get some touchy areas tonight. There are too many preachers in the pulpit. They see people come into their services and they're touched. And they look at that tree and all they see that it's good for food. There's an increase in my offering. There's another number on my board. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's some folk I love. I get around them. I love some of these folk. They don't talk much about heaven and hell. They talk about how big their ties are getting. They want to have the most ties in the state. They want to have the biggest church attendance. and They want to have the biggest this and the greatest that. God's not concerned about all that. The Bible declares a broken and a contrite spirit. God will not despise. What we, we should be excited about church growth, not because it's another number on the board, not because it's more money in somebody's pocket, because it's another life that's being changed. It's another heart that's being... Sh- hey, 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 somebody, hey, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'd like to see this thing grow that we're standing around the wall. Hallelujah. But if our, if our ideal of growth is just to get another number on the wall, then we're just like a business and we have no heart toward God. We have no relationship with God. And then we only see men as trees. Young minister, first touch. It was a real touch. Pharaoh didn't touch him. Jesus touched him. Listen to this. Listen to this. This, this spoke to me. He just gave me this today. In the Bible, trees were money. They built houses. They built wagons and furniture. People would buy them and sell them. They'd build boats and ships. Trees. Trees. That's when they looked, they just saw trees. I gotta, I gotta show these people how they can live better. I gotta show these people how they can drive nicer cars and I gotta teach them how they can borrow and loan and I, I got to teach them. And part of that is the gospel, but it's not all the gospel. The real gospel, he came to seek and to save that which was lost. That's the gospel. Another way some preachers look at trees, look at that tree. I'm gonna cut it down, get that bottle out of its pocket and that needle out of its arm, and I'm gonna I'll make a fine piece of furniture. It's going to look good on my front row. I'll be able to tell everybody that look who's in our church. Look what God's done. That's the way they look at people as trees. They only see trees. Is anybody hear what I'm preaching tonight? The, the, another way they look, they, they, they saw men as trees. What can I build out of them for me? Trees are firewood. It's, it's the keys to keep me warm. Their work, their support, their ties, their time. It'll cook my food. It'll bless me. And another way, and this is what I want to preach about tonight, they say, well, it's just a tree. I I hear some of these precious men. I hear them preaching. It's almost like they say, well, they're just trees. And they're going to die and it's going to be over with. If they don't think they're just trees, when some of these precious congregations are living in sin, how can they make the pulpit a comedy barn? If they don't think men are just trees. Most see men as trees. Trees have no soul. I don't have to worry about them. They're, they're, they don't have no soul. They're just going to die and burn for an hour or two and it'll be over with. But friend, you're not trees. You're real people. They won't preach on sin. They won't preach on judgment. They only preach on temporary things. Why preach on hell? A tree will only burn two or three hours. Why worry? No, friend, we're not trees. We're men. We ain't going to live 80 years or 200 years. You're going to live forever somewhere. We're not trees. We're men. You're women. Men of God, men and women in this place, we need to see people as men. Oh, God. We need to tell them there's going to be a judgment day. Be no fancy lawyer to hire on that day. There'll be no mistrial. There'll be no tainted evidence. But you're going to stand before God. 
And this second touch, it's not a one-time deal. I feel like I got a word from God. If we'll start preachers, we got to first be partakers. If we'll start getting in the presence of God, God's going to give us a love and a compassion for humanity that we have never tasted of before. And I believe people here, I believe we really love people. Hallelujah, for 20 years I've tried to build my ministry on this. But, but just in the last few days, I see a new level in this. I see a place where we're consumed with a love for people. We're consumed with a love to pull somebody out of hell. We're consumed with a desire to strengthen somebody, to touch somebody, to help somebody. Hallelujah, where we get so excited, we'd lay on the floor, we'd weep for somebody, we'd miss somebody meal for somebody. We'd fast and pray and God would deliver somebody and set somebody free. I don't want to see men as trees. I want to see men as men made in the likeness and image of God that's going to spend eternity somewhere. Church, go back. Let Jesus touch us again. Let Him touch us again and again till we see every man clearly. I want to talk about this. I want to talk about this. Charles, would you come and help me just a minute? Charles, I, I feel your love for me. I mean, I know Charles and Betty. Betty, I know you all love me. We, need, we, we don't have to dwell on this much here. We, we're all one, but we'll telecast. This needs to be dealt with a little bit. We, we, we need to pray till we see men clearly. Not white men, not brown men, not black men, not red men. We're just men. We're just men. Hallelujah. 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 Can I talk about this just a minute? Hallelujah. 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 If, if, if one of our, one of our Englishmen or Irishmen would come to this altar and pray, and you'd run up here and pray with him, and some little Chinese would come to this altar and pray, and you wouldn't pray with him, you need to get this altar and get right with God. If mere Charles would come to this altar and pray, and a little Vietnamese or a little Korean or a little Mexican come to this altar and pray, and you wouldn't come with them, you need to get this altar and pray, friend. You need to get right with God. Hallelujah. We're not going, we're not going very far in the anointing till we just see men. Hallelujah. If you just see color and you just see culture and you see language barriers, we're not going to go very far with God. Hallelujah. God will help us a little bit. He'll touch us a little bit. He will not give us this end time anointing till we see men clearly. He will not give a hallelujah. I don't care what your mama said. I don't care what your daddy used to say. I don't care what grandpa used to joke about. Till you can see men clearly, you're not going to walk in this end time anointed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel God in this place. I feel God in this place. I feel God in this place. If you can go home and laugh and joke and say something about some of us because we're different, you might get by with it. But you're not going to walk in this end time anointed. You're not going to, hallelujah. God is looking for somebody that will see men clearly. And somebody ought to praise the Lord. Somebody ought to praise the Lord. Somebody ought to magnify Jesus. Somebody ought to magnify the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. David, stand up and help me just a minute. You've been pretty sheltered. Mom raised you pretty tough. You, you, you've been around the press of the Lord all your life. But if we look and we're willing to help somebody that's always lived good, we're not willing to help somebody that's come from the pits of hell. Hallelujah, I'm not going to mess with Tim. I'm not going to mess with Tim. Tim's always going to be a drug. Hallelujah, Tim's always going to be messed up. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, somebody to praise the Lord. Somebody ought to magnify the Lord. Somebody ought to bless the Lord. Somebody, hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm not going to mess with him. I'll help David. Hallelujah. I'll, hallelujah. I'll help Andy. Andy's always been a good boy. I ain't going to mess with that, Tim. Don't leave me a minute. Till we can see men clearly. Till I can look at Tim. I don't see no past. I don't see no yesterday. I don't, hallelujah. Somebody ought to praise the Lord. Somebody ought to magnify the Lord. Somebody ought to praise the Lord. Somebody ought to bless the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Friend, if we want a move of God, if we want the presence of God, we got to see man clearly. 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 
We got to see man clearly. Haven, would you run up here and help me just a minute? Christian, would you come and help me, son? Eric, come help me just a second. Eric, Eric's working. We got to see, and I see this stuff traveling, and it hinders God. These, these, these grand men. Hey, help me a minute. You're married and you got three kids. <laughs> How you like that? You can't argue with me. We're in church. <laughs> Eric's married and you just got two. These brothers, they start coming to our church. Eric, Eric, Eric drops 100 in the service, 200 in a service. Haven pays his tithes. It's $5 a week. It's $10 a week. Every one of them's given all they can give. If we treat one different from it, I feel something bigger than me in here right now. Hallelujah. Till we see men clearly. And somebody ought to praise the Lord. Somebody ought to praise the Lord. Somebody ought to magnify the Lord. Hallelujah. Give them a hand clap. Friend, hallelujah. We're not going to have a move of God. We're not going to have a move of God. There'll be no move of God as long as we see people as tree. But when we see men like men, and somebody ought to raise your voice and magnify the Lord in this service right now. I feel, hallelujah, I'm preaching some stuff that needs to be preached. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may move up in a social club. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But my status. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But the ground's level at Calvary. Hallelujah. I don't care what color you are. I don't care which side of town you live on. I don't care what you drive. I don't care how you dress. I don't care where your clothes from. The ground's level at Calvary. I said the ground's level at Calvary. I said the ground's level at Calvary. And somebody ought to magnify the Lord. Somebody ought to magnify. We got to see men as men. We got to see men as men. Is men. We got to see men as men. We got to see them as men. We got to keep going back and let Jesus touch us. Now you know. I don't mean to embarrass you guys. Jerry, you ever got out by yourself and just preached? David, have you ever go down the road just preaching? Andy, Tim, but I have. I preach a lot in the mirror. Andy, you need this. Buddy, you need this. Say amen. But when I'm down in the woods, I shouldn't put as much emphasis on my altar call to some tree that will go back to dust as I should when I'm preaching to humanity. I'm not sure. I'm needing help. I'm needing help. I need to realize... What's there, 54, 55 folk here tonight? I need to realize somebody, this might be your last service. Joanne, I was looking at her book. I was looking at her book. Little Tim was sitting there. I didn't know it would be his last service. Sure, I didn't know. I didn't know you'd be standing over his casket a few days later. I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know. How we want to tell a story and grin every once in a while. We want to be happy. This holy spot's not a comedy barn. Hallelujah. You're not a tree that's going to be here today and gone tomorrow. You're going to spend eternity somewhere. Hallelujah. You're not going to die. You're not going to die. Hallelujah. You're not going to die forever. When we bury you, your soul's going to live. Hallelujah. When your body's rotted away, your soul's going to live. After your funeral, you're going to be alive somewhere. After the flowers have wielded, you're going to be alive somewhere. Hallelujah, after we've wiped our tears, you're still going to be alive somewhere. i got to ask you, is there a young person in here, if you died tonight, you'd go to hell? Is there a man or woman in here somewhere, if you died tonight, you might go to hell? Do you know that you know? Do you know that you know that you're ready to meet God? Are you sure? Are you sure everything you said about everybody you repented of? Are you sure every evil deed's under the blood? Are you sure your wicked past is under the blood? Do you know you've been forgiven? Oh. You've been hurt and you've been bruised. Some of you have been broken and beat down, discouraged. You're not trees, you're men. You're precious sisters. Would I not 
weep over your heart if I, as your pastor if I realize you're not trees, you're men and women. I'm telling you, church, let's encourage one another to go back and let Him touch us again over and over. If we follow on to know the Lord, if we continue, if we draw out of God, He'll... Hallelujah. Would you help me? Would you help me? Would somebody ask the Lord, I want my bird back. I want my tenderness back. <laughs> hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah. I've seen a few times in my life, I woke up weeping over souls, go to bed crying over souls, sat down eating meals and tore up over somebody about to go to hell. Food don't even taste right. Oh God, let us see men as men again. I'm not being hard. I know your battle's been hard. I know your storm's been rough. Let us all return for a second touch from the Lord, from the hand of the Master. I beg you, I'll tell you what I pray. Touch my eyes. Touch my soul. God, touch my lips and my ears. Let me be careful what I hear and what I say. Touch my mind. Oh God, please touch me. Somebody cry out for Him to touch us. Stir our soul, oh God, let us see men clearly. Where is the fear of God? Where is the fear of God? We're not preaching to trees. The flowers fade and they wilt. They vanish away. But the soul's forever. If we can see men as men, they're not enemies and they're more than just friends. It's not that they're weak or they're strong. They're just men. And we all need a Savior. I thought about little old Jonathan Edwards, one of my heroes. He wrote down a message. Read it over 200 times. And he'd weep and pray over it. Sinners in the hands of an angry God. Man, with dead fear of God would fall as he began to read. It's expired by fire. It's angry because you won't retain the blood of Jesus. It's angry because your heart's hard and cold and you never think of God except when you're in trouble. And he gets so anointed reading his sermon. Men would sit in their seats and pull their hair, run to the altar, grown farmers would scream and beg God to come into their heart, forgive them of their weakness. Jonathan Edwards saw me and his men. He didn't see them in streets. He knew they needed a Savior. Jesus is coming and trees will fade away. The Lord spoke this to Sharon. Come down, I knew I was on time. But man will live forever. Touch us again. That we may warn them, reach them. I want to see you as men and not as trees. Romans 14.10 But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set it not thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. We shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. We shall all stand. We shall all stand. I tremble as I prepare. I'm just going to keep you a few more moments. But I tremble as I prepare to speak of it just for a moment. Are you ready to stand before the judgment seat of Christ? Can I ask you a question? Where are you going to be 30 seconds after your heart quits beating? After the line settles straight on their best medical monitors, where's your soul going to be? Some of the Hollywood trials have made a mockery of our court system in the last few years. It's almost if you've got the right amount of money, the right lawyer, you can do what you want to, up to murder and get away with it. But I want to tell you, there's coming a day, Anthony, when you are going to stand. Men and women, young people, hear me tonight. You're going to stand before God. Trees are not going to stand before God. Rose bushes are not going to stand before God. The tall, slender palm tree, the oak tree, the redwood's not going to stand before God. But every man and woman's going to stand before God. And you're going to be judged according to the deeds you've done in this life. Can I say this? You're not going to be judged according to what people said about you. God's not concerned about gossip. You're going to be judged about what you said about others. 
You're not going to be judged the hurt that people's caused you. You're going to be judged the hurt you've caused others. You're not going to be judged by the way people have run you down, hurt you, wounded you, talked about you, lied on you. You're going to be judged to how you handled it, the way you took it. And somebody ought to magnify the Lord in this place. I want to tell you this. You hear a lot now. I want to preach some stuff just for two or three minutes. Somebody needs to hear this. Every great sheriff's department or police department, every great court system in America has an evidence room. You get picked up with a bag of marijuana, they'll take you to jail. They don't take the drugs with you. It's locked up, put in a bag, and it's locked up and put in a box. And it's carried behind a locked door, and it's put on an evidence shelf. And it's marked with your name and the date and the number of the trial. You get picked up with a stole gun, it's took to an evidence room. You get picked up with stole jewelry, it's took to an evidence room. God has an evidence room. Every time you do something wrong, it's carried to an evidence room. Every time you have a wicked thought, it's carried to... Oh, somebody got to hear this. Every time you have a wicked and thought, it's carried to an evidence room. Every time you let your spirit out of control, it's carried to an evidence room. But it don't stay there till the judgment day. All you got to do is go to an altar, get down on your knees, plead the blood, beg Jesus to forget you. In a moment of time, His hand sweeps into that evidence room and your shelf is clear. I said, your shelf is clear. I said, everything you repent of, He clears it out. Everything you beg His grace for, He washes it, He cleanses it. Hallelujah! 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 So Somebody ought to stand to your feet. Let the devil know. My shelf's empty. My shelf's empty. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. I repent. I repent. I repent before God. I repent before God. I've not always done it right, but I repent before God. I humble myself. I let Him... Ten years ago, I met a... This, this brother David in Cleveland, and he just sent us an email this week. He said, Brother Anthony, I'm grateful for the new website. It's most interesting. I'm hit by the hot presence of God while listening to the sermon on Lily of the Valley. I wish that I can only get more and more in his presence. I'm constantly visiting your side. It touches my spirit. I'm excited about it and informing all my friends here in Uganda. God bless you, Brother David. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen. Precious brother, precious brother. Pastor several churches there. Precious brother. Could, could we do this? Would, would you bow your head and join hands with somebody? Now, I, I just saw something in here I felt somebody needed tonight. Father, please touch us. As the heart pan after the water brook, so thirsteth our soul after thee, O God. Oh God, touch us. Let our spirit hear what you want to talk about tonight, what you want to say tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm so glad you're here. Book of St. Luke, the 15th chapter of St. Luke, a most familiar passage. Surely the Lord's in this house. If we keep our heart right, and if we stay humble and tender before the Lord, won't be long, we're going to have to get us some designated drivers. Amen. 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 We'll have to take your car key so you can't drive home drunk. Drunk in the Spirit. Amen. We'll load you up in the van. Get your car to Mark. Amen. Hallelujah. All the presence of the Lord is here. St. Luke, the 15th chapter, the 11th verse. I'm going to take this a different way, but I pray you'll be ministered to. First, build a house. You've got to build a foundation. St. Luke 15 and 11. And he said a certain man had two sons. Somebody say two sons. Preach on this a lot. We just talk about the one. But let's look at both of them. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. Not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. And there wasted his substance with righteous living. I'm not sure that we get the true picture of what a sacrifice this was for the Father. This was in a day when I'm almost sure he didn't have a CD to cash in. 
I'm almost sure, I'm almost sure that he, he didn't have a, a bank to go borrow money. Probably the 10,000 acres that had been in the family for so long or something, he probably had to take a piece of it and sell quickly. Probably had to sell it at a loss because the young guy wanted his inheritance in such a hurry. Probably had to dry, dr- divide up land that he had a plan for, that, that, that he had dreams for for his children. And this boy said, I want my portion now. Probably didn't have a cookie jar to go get the money out of. He had to give up something he loved to satisfy a boy he loved that was chasing something that would destroy him but a father's love reaches a long ways so 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 daddy's crying wiping his eyes we we don't know we don't know if a good neighbor or some thief bought him beside him we don't know we don't know what happened we don't know how he got the money we just know he had to scratch the money together this boy, don't even hardly say thank you. And many days after the younger son gathered together, all and took his journey into a far country. Didn't even hang around to spend no time with mom and dad. And there he wasted his substance with righteous living. When he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land. And he began to be in want. We got many young children in this church that's been sheltered. Mom and Daddy, we've sacrificed our life, our time to try to raise you up in the things of God. And I'm begging you, I'm begging you. Living for God, you're going to have storms. Living for God, you're going to have trials. Living for God, you're going to have tests. Living for God, this is not heaven. You'll have disappointments. You'll have trials. Hell will come to destroy you. Can I be real plain tonight? If you never put a needle in your hand, when you get in your arm, when you get discouraged, you won't have to fight to go back to that. If, if you never drank from that brown bottle when you get discouraged, that'll be one thing you'll never have to war with. Hallelujah. So the devil fights you every once in a while and say, this, all this holy living, where's it keeping you? What's it doing? Friend, it's helping you on your journey to help. It's ha- Hallelujah. Thank God. Thank God for every prodigal son or daughter he's restored. Thank God for every lost lamb he's brought back home. But somebody ought to thank God because he's kept you. You ought to thank God. Hallelujah. Because the blood reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley and it's the blood that gives us strength from day to day and it'll never, never, never lose its power. Hallelujah. I I heard a well-known preacher say one time, he said he is young in his ministry and he's hearing all these great testimonies as people was being delivered and set free. He said if he wasn't home by dark, mama had a switch wiring him out so he made him up a testimony. All he is delivered from. But friend, you don't have to make up a testimony. If it wasn't for the grace of God, we'd all be in hell. If it wasn't for the grace Grace of God would all be in a mess. You ought to lift your hands up. The same grace, the same blood, the same mercy that's touched one, it'll touch another. Hallelujah. Sin's only good while it's exciting. Sin's only good while the emotions are high. The booze is good till you hit the family head on and you take daddy into eternity curing for his baby. But sin's only good Till it catches up with you. By, 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 fri- by Friday's Athens paper, read about the, the seizure where they're going around arresting. It's only good for a little while. It's only fun for a little while. But be not deceived, God's not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he all so reap. Hallelujah. Highly, I want to be real careful. Highly, I, I'm going to be real plain, but I want to be real careful. While, while we're excited about your testimony and what you've been through, I don't want to make your past look like it was pretty because they wasn't a lot pretty about it. Hallelujah. 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 Ask, ask the little children wondering where mommy is or where daddy is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. Somebody say the blood. I, I, I asked him when he had the gun under his neck. I asked Jerry when he was despairing of his life. Hallelujah. There's nothing pretty about sin but for a moment. Hallelujah. I made a mistake one time. Daddy raised me strict. I said there can't be nothing good about sin. But the Bible said Moses chose to suffer affliction with the children of Israel whether, rather to enjoy the pleasure of sin for a season. There's pleasure in sin but it's for a season. There's pleasure in, in this world but it's only for a season. But the gift of God is eternal life. Hallelujah. The gift of God is eternal life. The gift of God is eternal life. He enjoyed it for a season. But when he spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land. And he began to be in want. The man that just took, was it four people he killed down in Georgia? Four people he killed. Talked to somebody that knew this family personally. 
his mom and daddy were killed in the, the airplane crash in Florida. Got a huge settlement. Should have been a wealthy man. In, in three or four years, wasted it all on drugs. Gone, gone, gone. Got down, got down. Money gone. Friends gone. Wife gone to Washington State with somebody else. Looked at it a little bit and said, I don't even care about you. I'll take your life. You mean nothing. Looked at the in-laws. I don't care about you. I'll destroy you. Pleasure was gone. The high was always somebody could hear me preach tonight. Hallelujah. But there's a father back home with his arms open wide. So, hallelujah. 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 I like what Brother Obi did this morning. Somebody ought to just stand to your feet. Thank God. Thank you for getting me out in time. Thank you for getting me out. Hallelujah. For I took one drink too many. It took an innocent family and he turned Thank you for getting me out. Hallelujah. Thank you for getting me out. Hallelujah. Thank you for delivering me from anger. Hallelujah. For I took an innocent soul into eternity. Thank you for delivering me from sin. For I destroyed. Somebody ought to praise the Lord in the house right now. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to thank the Lord. You ought to thank God that He got you out. Somebody ought to thank the Lord that He got you out. You ought to thank the Lord. Somebody ought to thank Jesus that He got you out. So you ought to go ahead. You ought to give Him a praise. Somebody I thank Him that He got you out. Friend, He got you out. Thank God He saved me just in time. You ought to thank God He got you out before you joined up with something that you couldn't get free from. And He went and joined Himself to a citizen of that country. And He sent Him onto His field to feed swine. This, Jesus telling this story, every commentary I've checked on said this was probably a Jewish boy. And these Jewish folks, they won't even eat a piece of bacon. They will not. They'll walk away from Virginia sugar-cured ham. They won't touch. They won't touch a, a, a piece of shoulder, bacon, ribs. Nope. This little old boy, you can get so far from your father. You'll do stuff you think you never would do. Hallelujah. 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 I, 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 I've watched people play with sin. And I've watched them mistreat little children and do horrible things. Hallelujah. When they first started looking or doing something, they thought that a never, sin will take you further than you want to go. It, it, it'll cause you to do stuff you don't want to do and it'll keep you longer than you want to stay. Hallelujah. 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 He, th he, he thought I'd have never been down there in something like that. And he would with fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat. And no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father have bread enough to spare? Hallelujah. And I perish with hunger. I will arise. Hallelujah. Clint said it. Obi said it. Hey, you got to make up your mind. I will get back up. you got to make your mind up. I want to get it right. Why don't somebody just lift your hands and say, I want to get it right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. you got to realize your father ain't going to do it all. you got to make it. I will arise. I will go to my father's house. Hallelujah. 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 I will arise and go to my father. And I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. I am no worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. He arose and came to his father. who was yet a great way off his father. Saw him and had compassion and run. And fell on his neck and blessed him and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and am no worthy to be called thy son. But the father said unto his servant, Bring forth, listen to this, listen to this, bring forth the best robe. Put it on him. Put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. I'm going to cover him completely, clothe him completely. And bring hither the fatted calf and kill it. And let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. And was lost and it is found. And they began to be merry. Now, I, I love to preach that. It's been preached on thousands of ways. But here's, I want to look at the elder son tonight. Now, his elder son was in the field. You know what I think he's doing? He's in a beer joint telling somebody you need the Lord. You know what he might have been doing? He's going through a project knocking on the door saying, you need a bus ride Sunday morning. He was in the Father's field. 
Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, help me preach tonight. Hallelujah. He, he, he was out in the woods on every other Thursday night laying in this carpet. Hallelujah. He said, Lord, we need revival. We need conviction in this little old place. Hallelujah. He was in his father's field. Somebody say the father's field. Hallelujah. On the job, he's telling somebody that Jesus still saves and he still heals and he still delivers. When the music wasn't playing and the preacher wasn't around, he was still living right. He was in his father's field. When he saw somebody had a need, he didn't have to feel chill bumps. There's something moved in him and he wanted to help them. When he saw somebody bruised and broken, he didn't have to speak in tongues or somebody prophesy to him. It was in his heart to pick somebody up, to lighten somebody's load. He was a good Samaritan that wanted to help change somebody's life. He was continually, week after week, month after month, year after year, in his father's field, working for his father. He heard the music and the dancing. He called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. He said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father has killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was angry, and would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. He didn't understand what was going on, and he went to church, and the music was singing, and he wouldn't get in. And he was angry and would not go in. He wouldn't get in. He he wouldn't worship. He, He wouldn't try to get in. He was discouraged. And he answered, said to his father, Now listen, I want to look at these four things. Lo, these many years I serve thee. Lord, I've got a bad doctor's report. And I've been serving you. God, I've been serving you and there's stuff going on in my life. It's tearing my heart out of me. Some of my love, Lord, I, I've been serving you and there's stuff I can't get this. Hallelujah. Got some love I'm about to be lost, but God, I've been serving you. Next, I need you to help me. I need you to move. God, I, hallelujah. Father, I have been serving you. Now listen to this. I've not only been serving you, I've neither transgressed at any time thy commandments, Lord. I've tried to walk upright. Thy, thy, thy word's been my law. Thy word's been my priest. Thy word's been my guidance. Thy word's been my delight. Somebody ought to lift your hands and thank God for His word. Father, at no time have I tried to transgress Your commandments. Father, at no time have I tried to sneak around and do what would hurt You or grieve You. Father, at no time have I tried to dishonor You. Father, at no time have I tried to displease You. Hallelujah. Father, I don't understand what's going on. I've been working in the field. Number one, I've been in the field working. Number one, number two, I've served You continually. Number three, Lord, I've kept Your commandments. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And Lord, Lord, this little old brother's come home and, and, he, and, he, and he's shouting and he's feeling good and he's speaking in tongues and I'm burdened down and I'm weighted down and I'm going through this and I'm going through that. And Father, I don't even know what's going on. Hallelujah. Father, I don't understand. God, I, I've been trying to do the right thing and, and I work from daylight to dark. I live right when they laugh at me. I live right when they mock me. I live right when I'm going through hell. I don't even understand what's going on. And now this young boy, God, good, you, you give him his son that you blessed him. He went out there. He wasted. He come back. You ought to made him a servant. Instead, you, you, you put the best robe on him. You put shoes on his feet and a ring on his finger. And then you went and you killed that fatty calf. Don't you know I had plans? I was going to have a party. I was going to celebrate with my friends. And you've killed that fatty calf we had down in the stall. Why you done all this? Look what I'm going through. Now somebody's got to hear this. But as soon as this thy son was come, that has de- that has devoured thy living with harlots, thou killed for him the fatted calf. Now listen, and he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meet that we should make merry and be glad for this. Thy brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. Ninety-eight percent, we preach on this chapter, this part of this chapter, we look at the prodigal son. But could we look at that tiny verse there? And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. Could he been saying, Son, you've been working so hard to please me. You've been trying so hard to keep my commandments. You've been trying so hard to obey me and find favor with me. Have you forgot that I'm your father? And if you forgot right now, everything I have belongs to you. You don't have to wait till I die, son. Anything you need right now belongs to you. 
Oh God, I, I will, God, please anoint me the next two or three minutes. Could we, could we, when we first come to the Lord, we had such a reckless faith, we had such a strong faith, and we had, and I know it was young and reckless, it wouldn't, it wouldn't guide it, it wouldn't train, it wasn't, it wasn't uh, deep in the Word of God. But don't you remember when you could just believe God for anything? Could it be that we've got so used to our Father, and we've got so used to the devil, that we think God has to do something supernatural? to move for us. So we think that, that something great has to happen for God. If somebody could just release faith in here tonight, how to raise cancer could leave in a second. If somebody could just release faith in here, how to everything that the Father has right now is ours. Somebody help me in this place right now. What, what does the Father have? He has healing. How, what does the Father have? That means right now, if there's sickness in this room, healing is ours. I mean, I wish somebody could hear that. If there's something going on in our health, right Right now, hallelujah. Don't have to wait till some certain evangelist comes through. I, I love to anoint with all. You don't have to wait till you anoint with all. Surely the presence of the Father has been in this place today. Everything that the Father has belongs to you. It's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. The kingdom of God. It's not meat and drink, but it's righteousness and it's peace and it's joy in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody, hallelujah. Somebody that the devil's been tormenting your mind. Hallelujah. I don't mind telling you preaching the gospel and praying fasting. Some of my worst battle is oppressors against my mind. Just don't torment in spirit. But I feel so good tonight. I feel so free tonight. I challenge somebody that's just been warring in your mind stuff against you. You ought to stand to your feet and say, devil, you're a liar. The peace of God is mine right now. Hey, hey, hey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I wish somebody would do it in the house right now. Hallelujah. I command that foul spirit that's warring against your mind to bow. Hey, hey, hey. I command it to bow. I command, I command worry to bow. I command nervous conditions to bow. I command that old foul spirit of fear to bow. I command it to bow. I wish you'd lift your hands and touch the Father. I wish you'd touch the Father. I wish somebody go ahead right now, son. Everything I have is yours. It's yours right now. It's yours right now. It's yours right now. It's yours right now. It's how it belongs to you right now. It belongs to you right now. It belongs to you right now. It's yours right now. It belongs to you right now. It, it's yours right now. It belongs to you right now. It belongs to you right now. When, when, a, when a father, when a family, they have a will. And two things got to happen to make that will. That, that child's got to come of age to usually to enter into that will. And they've got to be a death of the one that carries the will. The one that the will's about, they've got to be a death. You need to let the devil know 2,000 years ago. The testament. 2,000 years ago. The Word. 2,000 years ago. When Jesus died, this will went into effect. Everything I need is in the will. When I was born again, I came at age to receive my inheritance. I wish somebody could hear that. When I knelt at an altar and I repented of my sin, hallelujah. Long, long as I was, long as I was out from under the blood or out from under grace, not one of that promises, hallelujah, could I totally hold on to. I couldn't, I couldn't claim my healing. I couldn't claim my blessing. I couldn't claim my peace. Cause I wasn't, hallelujah, I wasn't meeting the will, the qualifications of the will. But when I was blood bought, when I was born again, hallelujah, I challenge somebody, I challenge somebody to make the devil open the case back up. Don't you settle for this doctor's report. Don't you settle for this judge report. Don't you settle for what the lawyer's saying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's the will of God. It's the will of God to bless you. It's the will of God that you have peace. It's the will of God for you to have joy. It's the will of God to turn your health around. It's the will of God to save your family. It's the will of God to anoint you. It's the will of God to raise you up. It's the will of God to talk to you. It's the will of God to lead you in green pastures. It's the will of God for Him to be your shepherd. It's His will to heal. It's His will to save. It's His will to deliver. And the devil is a liar. Look at somebody tell him the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. This elder son, he did not realize that right now everything the father had already belonged to him. Right now, everything the Father had already belonged to Him. Little old lady, 
Sent her son through college, spent everything she had. Sent him to a, he moved to another country, got a great job. She spent so much on his college, she began to lose things. Little old, and every once in a while he'd send her pretty pictures with strange writings and she'd stick them in her Bible. It came down to where she was starving. Some neighbors went over to her. About a little 60 year old mama fixing to lose her house, everything starving, fixing to turn the power off, and said, Would you please, you tell us your boy's wealthy, would you please write him? She said, I'd rather starve and die before I'd beg my son to help me. My boy's a good boy. He's, he's work. He can't come home. I've not seen him in years. He writes and sends me these pretty pictures. They said, Could I see? She went and got out the old family Bible and she opened it up and got a little old picture out and showed him and another and showed him and another. Big old grin come across her face. They said, Ma'am, these are not pictures. These are bonds. You're a rich woman. It was in the book all the time and you didn't even know it. Hallelujah. 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 Your light bill was there. Your grocery bill was there. Hallelujah. Your tax money. Hallelujah. It was in the book all the time. Hallelujah. 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 You need to pick up the Bible and find out what God is. You need to pick up the Bible and find out who God is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That the Bible said you is healed by His stripes. You're healed. You need to start out. You need to quit confessing I'm fixing to die. You need to quit confessing this thing's going to take me out. You need to quit confessing. Hallelujah. I'm really going through it. You need to start confessing by His stripes I'm healed. That is the will of God to heal me. The plan. I wish somebody would help me preach in this place right now. Hallelujah. 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 I can't promise you that my brother's going to heaven. I can't promise you my children, my wife. I can't promise you a million percent I'm going to hell. But I know it's the will of God for us not to go to hell. I know it's the will of God for us not to be lost. I've got two brothers that's in church, but I'm not going to let hallelujah, 30 years out of church beat me down and tell me that they're going to hell. I'm going to walk the floors and I've been doing it. Somehow, God's going to reach. Somehow, our prayers are going to have an effect. Somehow, hey, 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 hallelujah. I don't know who I'm talking to. Somebody I ought to jump to your feet and say, this worry's got to get off of me. This nervous has got to get off to me about my family. I'm not going to let my family. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray. I'm going to believe God. I'm going to trust God. I'm going to hold on to God. I can't save. I can't heal. I can't deliver. But I trust God. I believe God. I believe God. I'm standing on the Word of God. I'm standing on the promise of God. I choose to believe God. Son, everything I have right now is yours. What is it? He's conviction. He's salvation. He's mercy. He's hope. He's peace. you got to help me. There's an anointing in here. Reach over and get a hold of somebody's hand. And just ask God to just expand their heart. Just to make them realize that God's bigger. God's bigger than just a, a little emotion. God's bigger than just a good feeling. God's bigger than just a headache. God's bigger than, than, than just a little touch. God's bigger than paying your light bill. God's bigger than just touching you one time. God's bigger than just something that could happen. How do He's gone. He created worlds without Him. He's the lily of the valley. He's the bride in morning. And star and everything he has belongs to you right now. Everything he has, everything he is belongs to you right now. If it's in the book, it belongs to you. Son, can't you see? You were with me all the time. I gotta stop preaching a moment. Would you stand to your feet? Stand to your feet and reach out with everything in your heart. And he said to him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. God, give me this, give me this this morning. I was going to go a different direction tonight. Jerry, God, give me this this morning while you were, while the choir was singing victory in Jesus. And I saw some little soldiers. And God hid your face from me. I don't know who you are. I saw five little soldiers in this room. This, hallelujah, hallelujah. Just beat down, just beat down. Hallelujah, hallelujah. But I'll remind you, you've been a faithful soldier. You've been in the field. I want to remind you, you've been keeping the commandments of the Lord. 
And I challenge you to reach out to the Father right now. I believe God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Would you come and stand in these altars with me? Would you come whatever your need is? Jerry, why don't you bring the choir back up and sing victory in Jesus? Whatever. Hey, hey, hey. And there, there's two people in the choir that God wants to move for tonight. Two people in this choir. There's three more out in the Itabahaya, out in this auditorium somewhere. God wants to move for you. Friend, I said God wants to move for you. It's the will of God for you to walk out of this building tonight with victory. It's the will of God for you to walk out of this building tonight with peace. It's the will of God. If you've got a need, come and stand in this altar. If you've got any need in your life, come and stand tonight. Hallelujah. You're not coming to the preacher. We're coming to our Father. We're not coming to the choir. We're not coming to each other. We're coming to the presence of God. Everyone that would, come and stand in these altars with me just for a few moments. Come, come, come and stand with me as they sing. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Heard it all. Oh, so real. How a Savior came. From glory. How He gave His life. Oh, Calvary. To save. Are you really sure? I don't know about you, but the Bible's, the Bible's full of this. We need to examine ourselves. We need to search ourselves to see whether we be in the Word or not. I know a lot of folk preach. I know they do. And some of this stuff I'm going to preach may not be comfortable if the Lord allow us to hire this. But I know a lot of people preach just repent and get in church and live anywhere and do anything. But I don't find it in this King James Bible that I carry, friend. The Bible says, this Bible declares it's appointed on the man who wants to die, and after that the judgment. This Bible declares if we go down in righteousness, we'll awake in righteousness. But if we go down in filth, we'll awake in filth. If we go down saved, we'll get up saved. If we go down lost, we'll get up lost. Somebody says, you, you, I, I'm a child of God, I can't backslide, I, I can't get away from God. Adam was the original son of God, and he walked away. The Bible declares Adam the son of God. And Adam looked at God and he looked at Eve and he said, I want her more. And after he walked away from relationship with God, Judas is one of the chosen twelve. He walked away. The Bible is not a book of just about people going to heaven. It's also stories in there. It's about kings that were anointed and reigned and prayed. And they died like they were never anointed. Saul was God's king, but his funeral, David's weeping, said, Saul, you died like you were never never anointed the old prophet Eli his sons died in a mess we, we, we take salvation so lightly since 9-11 I meet few people that aren't saved I'll witness to somebody with a beer in their hand I go to church I'm saved you, you go up witness to somebody and they just got through cussing somebody out. And you start talking about church. I go to so and so. I'm on my way to heaven. This, this, this term is used so lightly. Everybody's saved. Everybody's had a religious experience. Everybody's seen God and heard God, felt God. But I'm not sure it's the same salvation I read about in the Bible. Somehow, somehow people come to these altars, they, they, they don't get enough to lice the day out. They don't get enough, hallelujah. We, we, we have people come to church, hallelujah, and they'll weep and they'll pray and the Lord will touch them, but somehow it's not enough to keep them. But there is a real genuine experience with God that will change your life, that will deliver you, that will set you free. There is a real touch of God. I read, I read in the Bible, this thing costed blood. It cost a whipping post. It cost a hill called Calvary. 
I read, I read the history, read about some of these old men and women of God. Peter got saved and he messed up one time and he backslid. And he's weeping his way back. And the Lord's restored him. Peter, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me, Peter? Feed my sheep. The Lord's restored him and bring him back. But at his death, Peter... Peter said, I'm not worthy to be crucified, my Lord. Hang me with my head down, history declares. Barnabas was dragged <coughs> Barnabas was dragged out of the city and burned about A.D. 64. Andrew preached against idolatry and he was crucified on an X cross. James was stoned and beaten to death. Philip was stoned about 54 A.D. And we want to give up when we get in a storm. If we pray a prayer and God don't answer it on, on time, God don't love me and this thing ain't working and ain't no need of me living for God. Amen. Stevens was stoned. James, the son of Zebedee, he was put to death with the sword, Acts 12. History declares Paul was beheaded. Polycarp, his last words all these years of serving him, he's done me nothing but good. The old preacher, the old blacksmith, John Huss, his last words, I can now say I've begun to be a Christian. We tell stories of Fox's Book of Mortars over and over and over. People died, laid their life down for this gospel. And I'll tell you, friend, I, I, I'm going to burn my heart today. I want, you got to hear me today. Don't sneak into hell. If you're going to hell, live it up. Don't sneak into hell sitting in a Pentecostal church. Don't sneak into hell lifting your hands and worshiping God and going out of here and living like hell. Don't, don't, hallelujah. hallelujah. Make up your mind who you're going to serve. I'm not saying you're not going to have temptations. I'm not saying stuff's not going to pull at you. But make up your mind, I'm going to ride this altar till I get strong. I'm going to seek the Lord till something breaks in my heart. Hallelujah. David said, find the right stone. If worship's not getting you through, start missing some meals. If that's not getting you through, start walking the floors. God, you've got to help me. Build your prior life back. Read that Bible. Find something that will change your heart and your life. But you don't have to go to hell and you don't have to be lost without Jesus. I love you and I need you. I need you. I want to be your pastor. I want to be part of your life. But I, I'm, I'm not going to accept your friendship at the, at the expense of afraid to preach to hurt your feelings. I, I don't want you to stand on judgment day. And the Lord shaking his head and said, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. And you turn around and point your finger at me and said, Lord, I could have made it if that preacher would have told me the truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I ain't going to worry about losing your ties or your attendance and try to preach some easy message. I'm going to tell you straight as the gate and narrows the way. I'm going to tell you if you're going to live, if you're going to make it to heaven you gotta live right if you're gonna make it to heaven you gotta walk right if you're gonna make it to heaven you gotta love the word of God if you're gonna make it to heaven hallelujah it ain't always gonna be emotion it ain't always gonna be a good feeling you're gonna have to go on when you cry you're gonna have to go on when you're discouraged you're gonna have to go on when you got questions you're gonna have to go on when you pray and you don't feel God when you pray in heaven don't it don't light and it don't thunder and it looks like God's mad at you and he's forgot you and the devil's lying to you and the Christian friend are laughing at you and the world's mocking you got to make your mind up I'm going to hold on to God's unchanging hand I can't stop now I can't give up now I can't quit now anybody in the house want to go to heaven is there anybody in the house that wants to make it to heaven is anybody in the house make your mind up I want to see the Lord I want to go to heaven I want to take my family to heaven I, I'm not questioning the Bible I'm not questioning the plan of salvation. I'm not questioning the scripture. I'm not questioning Calvary. But I do want to examine my salvation. I believe it's going to take the same thing to keep me that it took to save me. 
I believe it's going to take the same thing from day to day that it took to brought me to the arms of the lily of the valley of the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. I, I see some stuff that's missing in, in Pentecostal circles that's got me bothered just a little bit. The number one, what's the number one thing it took to bring me to Jesus? It was old fashioned Holy Ghost conviction. Hallelujah. I want to see conviction in our lives again. I want to see the fear of God. I want to see conviction in our services again. I want to see conviction. Friend, if it took conviction to save me, it's going to take conviction to keep me. Hallelujah. And I, I, I get tore up every once in a while. I don't, I don't want to lose the convictions that God's got in my life. My convictions, hallelujah. I can't preach all my convictions. Some of them's between me and God. Some of them are personal. Some, some things are just a secret between me and the Lord. I want to preach the Bible. But I tell you, you need some convictions in your your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You need the Lord to speak to you and deal with you and tell you, hallelujah, you're a new man. You're a new woman. All things have passed away. they got to be some changes in your life. They need to be some changes in your life. Amen. I, I, I want to see convictions in our altar again. I remember hearing a Baptist preacher and I was riding down my road and I was praying through and I, somebody would give me a tape and I was listening to it. I got out and threw the tape in the floor. I thought, man, you're so hard. I don't know if I've ever heard anybody hard as you. About a month later, I listened to it in and I jerked it out. A month later, I listened in and I thought, I don't like some of it, but you're right. But he's telling a story. He said he's in a revival. He said God was moving and he said the altars was full. He said there's a man that they'd begged to come to church for years, a little old woman's husband. They'd begged and he said he showed up in the church. Said I went over to him, said he motioned me over. He said, Preacher, come help me get saved. They finally got me here and I want to get saved. He said, I took my Bible and said, I explained salvation to him. His eyes was excited and said, I told him. Said, I told him, I said, said, we'll see you here next Sunday. He said, Well, I don't know about that. I'll come every once in a while. Said, I told him, said, you, you can't you can't drink your beer no more. You can't shoot your drugs up no more. You can't do your gambling. You're messing around no more. He said, Now wait a minute, preacher. He said, I like my wife in this little church and I want to go to heaven. I ain't giving that stuff up. He, he, he said, what are you talking about? He said, I'm just not going to give it up. He said, I, I like it. He, he, he said, what do you mean, son? He said, if you, if you love the Lord and you're on your way to heaven and you accept them old bloody stripes and you accept that them nails in his hand, he said, you can't live the way you used to live and shoot your drugs and do your... He said, now, preacher, I'm going to come to church and I'm going to give some money along, but I'm not going to change my lifestyle. He said, please, son, let the Lord help you. He said, now, listen, preacher, I'm not... He said, boy, get up off of your knees and get back in your pew and sit down. And I thought, that's a hard this man and I just jerked the tape out and I thought man you're too mean that boy's in the altar he said boy get back and you see he said why he said he said I'm a preacher and he said I'm not going to let you lay in this altar and walk out of here with the false pretense that you're saved and go out here and get in a car wreck and go to hell and your blood be on my hands he said you're not ready to get saved he said you want religion to help your home you want religion to make you feel better you don't want real salvation you don't want conviction you don't want to lay nothing down you don't want to give nothing up you don't want to surrender nothing you just want the peace of God and the blessings of God and you can't tear the blessing away from the cross. You can't tear the anointing of God away from the cross. And I wish somebody would magnify Jesus in the house right now. Hallelujah. There are too many preachers hallelujah, that's wanting our offerings and wanting our tithes and wanting another number on the on the board that our church is growing and they're afraid to tell you the truth. They've got, they've got so much financial load on them. They're afraid if they preach the Bible, the church will go broke and they won't get their salary Hallelujah. But I've heard my daddy say it and I want to repeat it. I'd rather drink branch water and eat cornbread and preach the Word of God than preach a bunch of lies to you and live in luxury and we all go to hell. Hallelujah, friend. I want us to get to heaven. I want us to make it to heaven. I want us to make it to heaven. I want us to make it to heaven and somebody ought to magnify the Lord. I want to ask you, if you're saved, where's the conviction in your life? If you can do people anyway and go home and sleep... Where's the conviction in your life? Hallelujah. I'm going to preach today. I was in some folks' home that I love. And I was looking at their movies. And every other one was R-rated. And every other one was full of adultery and vanity, profanity and nudity and all this. How can a man or a woman of God that speaks in 
tongues and have the Holy Ghost. How can we sit down and that sweet spirit that dwells in us sit there and watch field? Hallelujah. Oh, somebody let me preach today. Where's conviction in our lives? Where's conviction in our lives? How can we hurt the Lord? How can we get involved in this stuff and keep the anointing of God and the peace of God? I don't know about you. I'm praying, God, I don't want to lose my conviction. I want more. Would somebody stand to your feet say, God, give me some conviction back. Give me the fear of God back. Stir me again. Anoint me again, God. Don't let me lose my conviction. Oh, I feel God in the house today. God, don't let me lose my convictions. Where's conviction at? Where's conviction at? Where's conviction at? Where's our tears at? I'm not saying, I'm not saying I'm a perfect husband. And I can't stand it when I hurt Sheila. I can't stand it when I say or do something and I make her cry. I can't stand it. But you know how one way I know I'm saved? When I make my wife cry, I can't lay down and sleep and feel good. When I hurt my wife, when I do something to die, I, 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 I want to be a good father, and I'm not always a good father. Every once in a while, I have to go back and tell John or Michael, son, I'm sorry. I am so embarrassed, and I'm so sorry. Daddy didn't get all the facts when he dealt with this, and I am so sorry. But I know I'm on my way to heaven, not because I speak in tongues. I don't know I'm just on my way to heaven because I feel chill bumps, but I'm on my way to heaven because when my old flesh shows off and acts crazy, that sweet presence of the Lord that makes me shout and feel good. He'll come down and squeeze me and said, son, you messed up this time. You need to make it right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, friend. If you do anything, you go back to church and be blessed every time. You better get back these altars and make sure you're saved. And I wish somebody had magnified Jesus in this house. Hallelujah. Where's conviction in our lives? I want to see conviction in these altars. I want to see people when they come and repent. I want to realize if I'm saved, I've got to change. Repent means to turn away from. I want some godly sorrow. I, I was I was in Indiana and I made an altar call and there was a man hired down to here. He was in that altar and I was blushing and stuff his repenting of. But there's godly sorrow on his begging. God forgive me. God let me get it right. God I'm sorry I did this and this and this. Hallelujah. I want to see it in the house of God again. But it's not going to be in these altars if it's not in mine and your life. If we can sit in the house of God and have sin and junk in our life, live any way and do anything and there's no conviction in our life, there's not going to be no conviction when our lost loved ones show up. But if there's convictions in our life, if the power of God's in our life, if the anointing of God's in our life, it'll be there when the lost show up. The number two thing that changes us is justification Romans 4 and 25 who was delivered for our offense and was raised again for our justification just as if it never happened Obi would you walk up here just a minute every time I pray and I know we can preach justifications a lot of different ways but this is you're one of the finest pictures that I could think of justification. If you're around Brother Obi very long at all, his children, every one of them in church, living for the Lord, seeking the Lord, his, his wife, their, their, their dedication. And I look at Obi, Obi, if I didn't know you, if I didn't know your testimony, I'd think your daddy was a preacher and your grandpa was a preacher and, and you was a always been raised in church if, if just to watch your lifestyle I think you've never been involved you never but Obi hallelujah just a few years ago messed up with drugs a few years ago hallelujah a whole different lifestyle oh I wish somebody could hear what a highly justification listen friend when you're justified when you're really hallelujah 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 when you're really justified somebody ought to look at you and just think you've always lived for the Lord somebody give Jesus a hand clap hallelujah 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 oh, somebody go ahead and 
magnify the Lord. Somebody go ahead and bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. How can, can we talk about a thing or two today? I believe God will save a homosexual. I believe, I believe the blood of Jesus will deliver them and set them free. Hallelujah. But when you've been saved two years, if it's a man, if it's a woman, if it's a man, he's been saved two years, he don't need to still be lifting his hands like this. Hallelujah. You shouldn't be able to get around a saved homosexual and look at their traits and the way they stand and the way they act and the way they twist and walk. Say, say, I can tell, I tell you're on your way to heaven, but you're a saved homosexual. No, you ought to get around him and just think he's always been a real man. Hallelujah. Well, when you see these traits in people, they've not been delivered, friend. Hallelujah. Can I deal with this thing a minute? Hallelujah. People come to the altar. That's the reason we have so many folk that don't hold on to the Lord. That's the reason we have so many folk that don't last. They come to the altar and they get enough to feel good, but they don't stay in this altar and get enough to change them. You gotta, you gotta get a hold of that horn of that altar and you got to ride it. Hallelujah. 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 You may have been a little old woman that used to sell your body or give it away. Wear your skirts up to your bottom and your blouse is unbuttoned down to your navel. Your body hanging out. But when you've been in church two years, we shouldn't be able to walk up to you and say, I'm so glad you're saved, but I can tell by the way you act and dress what you used to be. You we ought to look at you and say, you've always been a woman of God. Hallelujah. I don't, I don't know what's happening in our Pentecostal churches. Hallelujah. Had I, I preach in too many churches, you just might have to close your eyes. The way the ladies dress, not at Walmart, not in town. I'm talking about in the house of God. Hallelujah. 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 Your body was made for your husband, not for your neighbor, not for somebody up the road and down the road. We ought to cover up our nakedness, friend. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not just women, not just women, but men ought to not dress away to entice somebody. Hallelujah. You men ought to not have your blue jeans sprayed on you. You ought to not do things for the wrong reason, the wrong road. You're a Holy Ghost field. You're a tongue talking. You're full of the glory of God. You ought to walk like a woman of God. You ought to talk like a woman of God. You ought to do everything you can to lift up the name of Jesus and still you're going to have some trouble and still you're going to have some storm because the Bible said if the righteous scarcely be saved, hallelujah, we're not going to dance our way to heaven. We're going to make it by the blood. We're going to make it by the blood. By the blood. Oh, somebody say the blood. The blood. The blood. The blood. Listen, this, this is the area where this pastor's telling you. And I'm going to work on it today. I'm going to work on it. You may have been a fighter looking for somebody to fight when you were in the world. But now that you're a Christian, let's ride these altars. Paul said, in my weakness, I'm made strong. I'm made, hey, 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 oh, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Hallelujah. Mama, your, your grandma may have cursed and your aunt may have cursed. And you, may, you may have been quick to get everybody told off. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You say, well, it just runs in the flood. It runs in the family. It comes through the bloodline. It don't come through the blood of Jesus. You've been brought into another family. What am I going to do? You're going to have to deal with it. You're going to have to say, God, I'm doing good and I'm on my way to heaven. But there's this old ugly place in my life that I don't like. Hallelujah. You said in my, I feel the Holy Ghost in the house. Hallelujah. I don't know about you. I don't know about you. There's some areas of Anthony I don't like and I'm dealing with I'm saying God, hallelujah. This ain't like a man of God. This ain't like hallelujah. There ain't none of us walking on water. Hallelujah. But we get closer to Jesus if we'll cry out. And I like what I feel in the house right now. I wish somebody cry out. God help me to deal with areas of my life. I'm not what I used to be. But I'm not what I want to be. I want to draw nigh to God so that God will draw nigh to me. We ought to be justified just as if it didn't happen. Just as if it didn't happen. We need to stay in these altars. We need to stay in these altars. God help me. God help me. I die. God help this part of my life to die. God help this part of my will to die. God help this part of my flesh to die. God help me. Would somebody lift your voice and just say, Help me, Jesus. King Jesus, I need help. Lamb of God, I need help. Lord, I need help. Lord. Where's conviction? If I'm saved, where's my conviction? Where's my conviction? Am I justified? Do I just try to fit in? Do I walk different than I used to walk? Is my desires different than they used to be? Do I have salvation or do I have religion? The third thing, the third thing, when you're really saved, you get sanctified. 
we preach this many different directions. I want to look on the part. You're set apart for the work of God. Do you know when you're really saved? You know one way you can tell you're saved? When there's a burning in your heart to be used of God. Just set apart. Set apart. Just set apart for the work of God. Simply means I'm committed to Jesus. I won't do what I used to do. I won't act like I used to act. I won't even go all the places I used to go. I won't be what I used to be. Jeremiah 1, 5, he said, I've ordained you a prophet. Sanctified you. I've set you aside. Now listen, I want to deal with something. And this is not easy to preach. Your flesh, if you give in to your flesh, it will destroy you. And it'll do it real easy. It'll do it real gradually. We we pack a lot on the devil. That's just our old Adam will. We pack a lot. Oh, the devil made me do this. The devil made me do that. Some folk talk about there's only one devil. There's a lot of demons and spirits. Some folk talk about so much about the devil. He must never go nowhere else. He chases you all the time. <laughs> Four hundred billion people are gonna have a good day because the devil's chasing you. I'll go home and sleep tonight. Devil's going home with you. Devil woke me up in the middle of the night. There's only one devil. It's your will. It's your will. Oh, God, help me preach this. Where you change it at? You get back in this altar. You get back in this altar. God, I'm fixing to die. Whether it's now or whether it's 20 years, I'm going to die. And they go come and get my body. And they're going to embalm it. I'm going to lay there. My friends are going to come and bring me some flowers. And something's going to come and they're going to cry over me. But while they're there, my spirit's going to be somewhere. And their flowers are not going to change it. And what they're saying is not going to change it. How I'm living right now is what's going to change it. What I'm doing right now is going to affect my eternity. Friend, don't fool yourself. Don't fool yourself. Don't kid yourself. Hallelujah. Uh, that little, 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 little old preacher saw the vision of hell. And he, and he, and he, he just described hell. And he said he saw this guy. And he's running around picking people up and looking at them and throwing them down. And looking them up and throwing them down. And he, in this vision, he asked the Lord, he said, who's that guy looking for? And he said, he's looking for the preacher who told him he could live anyway and do anything and go to heaven. And said he slipped into hell. Friend, your flesh will send you to hell. If you don't start buffeting your flesh, if you don't if you don't start getting control of your flesh, if you don't start praying when you don't feel like praying, if you don't start going to church when you don't feel like going to church, if you don't start reading your Bible when you don't feel like reading your Bible, if you don't start doing the right thing when you don't feel like doing the right thing, that thing will get stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. You're going to lose your conviction. You're going to lose your brokenness. And you're going to end up without God. And Buddha can't help you. And Muhammad can't help you. And if God pushes you away, this little old preacher can't help you. I'm begging somebody. To get your conviction back. And let the Lord justify you. Get sanctified. Get set aside for the work of God. Somebody lift your voice and beg the Lord. God, don't quit dealing with us. Somebody beg Him in this service. God, don't quit dealing with us. God, don't quit chastising us. God, don't quit correcting us. Can I, can I ask you a thing or two? I've got, I got to preach today. This is one of those, I'll go home and I'll, I'll tell Sheila, I'll say, babe, I preach too hard. And I'll have to cry and pray over this, but I'm not apologizing. I'm saying in the Bible, I'm not apologizing. I love you, but i got to tell you the truth. Do you remember when you first got saved? You'd do something wrong on the job. You'd do something wrong in your family. And that thing would grip your heart. And you'd pray and pray. You just wanted to feel clean. I don't know about you, I want to feel clean again. <laughs> I want to feel peace again. I want to feel a burden again. Do you remember you'd wake up and you just felt so close to God? Guess who moved? Don't you remember you'd pray and you'd feel so close to God? Guess who moved? Don't you remember you'd go to church and you'd worship and you'd get free? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You'd leave feeling so close to God. Guess who moved? The enemy use it, but your flesh is trying to destroy you. 
you got to tell it, no, you can't keep me out of heaven. Adam's flesh, his will got him away from God. Serpent used it and beguiled Eve, got her away from God. Sanctified. Here's what, here's what I beg the Lord. He won't do it. But I've asked the Lord. I really ask Him. God, I wish you'd just put a cable or chain on my hand and just tie me to the altar so that I wouldn't get away from you and I wouldn't mess up. But He let me know after a season of prayer, He let me know that if He did that, I'd be just like a robot. The reason He loved man, He was a free will agent. He said, Andy, you've got to stay in that altar because you love me. I'm begging Miracle Deliverance Tabernacle. I'm begging those that's listening to me. Hallelujah. Come back to our altars. Let's start praying again. Let's start asking the Lord, God, help my witness again. Help my desires again. Hallelujah. I've been praying like Well, I've not just been praying for you. I've been praying for Anthony. God, help me to love you right. Help me. I don't know how to love you right sometimes. I, God, help me to go to another level. Help me to get closer to you. Hallelujah. I stand to your feet. I need to stop preaching while this anointing in your. The Lord cried out after Adam had fell. The voice of God had met with Adam in the cool of the day and he'd walk with God. One day God shows up and Adam's not there and God cries out, Adam, Adam, where art thou? Where are you, son? And I asked you today in this church, where are you? Where are you? God didn't ask Adam because God wanted to know. He wanted Adam to know where he was. Be real kind and don't let them answer. But just turn around and ask somebody, where are you? Where are you? Not, not physically sitting on a pew here in Miracle Deliverance Tabernacle or in a chair. And it's blessed. It's, we're blessed today to have a crowd. We had to get chairs out. We're, if the Lord looks like the Lord's going to bless us with some really nice pews from... North Carolina, but we're blessed to be here today. But I'm not asking where you're sitting at geographically. I'm asking in your spirit. Are you as tender with God as you used to be? Are you as thirsty for God as you used to be? Are you as sensitive to the Spirit of God as you used to be? Church, I asked you, where are you? Where are you? Where you are reveals a lot about your heart. You find somebody in a situation, it will reveal their heart. If we're in the world, it will reveal our heart. If we're part of the world, it will reveal our heart. If we're wherever we, it will reveal our heart. But now, let, let's, even when we come to church, we're all not the same place. But where you are will reveal your heart. Everybody at the cross didn't have the same position. Some was close to the cross, some was a distance, some stood afar off. So where you are... Reveals a lot about your heart. Now after you come to Jesus, there's different places you can be around Jesus. We live in a generation, too many church folk are in the face of Jesus. You boys get in your face when they want the car keys. Michael get in my face in about an hour and he'll say, Daddy, I'm, I'm going to eat with somebody or I'm going to, if he's going with me, he won't be, if he's going to eat somebody, I need five dollars for a hamburger. He's wanting something. Too many people in America, I didn't see it in Jamaica. I didn't see it other places I've been, but too many people in America stay in the face of Jesus. Give me this, give me this. Lord, do this, do this, do this. I want this. Oh, oh Lord, I, I got my wish list. Do this, do this, do this. Uh, others are just always, don't even acknowledge His face, just reaching for His hand, seeing what He's going to give them. And at least they made an effort to get close to Jesus, but yet that's not enough, and that's not the place that will change our heart or affect our nation. But there is a place close to Jesus that will change your life more than any other place or position you can go, and that's at the feet of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. I want to talk to you today about being at the feet of Jesus. I want to talk to you about some things that will happen when we make an effort to get to the feet of Jesus. To get to the feet of Jesus is a sign of humbling ourself. you got to humble yourself and surrender yourself and submit yourself and get at the feet of Jesus. In the book of Matthew, the 15th chapter, we want to start here and look at some places. And my, my, my wife needs a touch. This is where we need to go. Anybody in here need a touch? We need to get to the feet of Jesus. Matthew, Jerry, we need to get to the feet of Jesus. We need to get them knees to the feet of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Margaret, the touch you got, we got it to the feet of Jesus. 
Hallelujah. When I was nine years old and the doctor looked in my daddy's face and said, the little boy's going to die. He won't live the day out. Get him to the hospital. Instead, they took me to a little praying woman. Come off of a 40-day fast and somebody got me to the feet of Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody got me to the feet of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Anybody in the building ever been to the feet of Jesus? Anybody in the house? Hallelujah. How would somebody, anybody ought to stand and just say, I've been to the feet before. I, I recognize those feet. I am no stranger to those feet. I have found healing at those feet before. I have found new beginnings at those feet before. I have been touched at those feet before. Is it the feet of Jesus? Burdens was lifted away. Is it the feet of Jesus? Hallelujah. Clinton, I believe between Athens and Knoxville Hospital, that old hearse, that old ambulance, got at the feet of Jesus and he turned that heart around. I believe that. Hallelujah. This little old Matthew 15th chapter. And multitudes came unto him. Listen to this. Let's talk about this first. And multitudes came unto him, having with them those that were lame, blind, dumb, maimed, and many others, and cast them down at Jesus' feet, and he healed them. Listen to this. Great multitudes came unto him, having with them those that were lame, blind, dumb, maimed, and many others. And cast them down at Jesus' feet, and He healed them. If we can get to the feet of Jesus, Jesus is not going to turn us away. We we live in an hour right now when our our doctors, and I don't want to sound hard, but they're so busy. I talked to a precious man the other day. Somebody attends this church facing something deadly in their life. And, and the physician he's with is so busy, can't even see him for over, over four weeks, can't even get an appointment. But I want to tell you, when you have a need, Jesus is not going to never turn you away. Did anybody hear that? Hallelujah. When your heart's heavy, Jesus is never going to say, I'm sorry. The calendar's full. I'm sorry you're going to have to get an appointment six months down the road. I'm sorry I can't help you today. Hallelujah. His his arm's not heavy. His ear's not deaf. Hallelujah. Jesus is not tired. Jesus is not weary. Jesus is not too busy to hear the cry of your heart. You just got to make an effort to get to the feet of Jesus. Hallelujah. I wish somebody cried. You're helping me get to Jesus. I wish somebody said out loud, Lord, help me get to the feet of Jesus. If, if I can get to the feet of Jesus, burdens are lifted away. If I can get to the feet of Jesus, I'll find strength and be refreshed and be encouraged. I don't care who gives up on me if I can get to the feet of Jesus. I, I don't care what storm I'm battling if I can get to the feet of Jesus. It doesn't matter how heavy your load is if you can only get to the feet of Jesus. And then after they made the effort to get to the feet of Jesus, in so much that the multitude wondered when they saw the dumb to speak, the maimed to behold, limbs growing out, the lame to walk, the blind to see, and they glorified the God of Israel. You want to be a worshiper, you get to the feet of Jesus. You get to the feet of Jesus. You get to the feet of Jesus. It's a place of healing. It's a place of healing. It's a place of healing. I, I remember, I remember in the early sixties, daddy was working in Atlanta and he stuck a nail through his foot and, 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 and it set up gangrene and it, and it began to stink. It began to rot and it, his leg began to run streaks and it was, it was all infected and my daddy just kept praying and holding on and, but I, and I, I remember some folks would come and pray for him and they'd try to put fear on him and they'd try to, put doubt on him but every once in a while somebody would come and lift his hands up and they'd say God's going to move for me I just know he's going to move for me and some would come and tell him that, that my mom would have to raise those kids myself he's going to die from that thing but then the Lord sends somebody and hold his hands up and get him back to the feet of Jesus but one day on a Sunday morning about 7 o'clock in the morning he got to the feet of Jesus and he didn't limp away he walked away with a miracle hallelujah hallelujah if you've not got your breakthrough yet keep coming back if you've not got your answer yet keep knocking keep seeking if you can get to the feet of Jesus he'll turn it around for you if you can get to the feet of Jesus he'll change it for you it's so much that you'll wonder God I knew you could do it but I'm just amazed I give you glory I give you glory I give you glory Luke 10 the 10th chapter of the book of Luke it's a place of learning Thank God for your pastor. Please love me. Please pray for me. Respect me and hold my hands up. 
Let's get, help each other get to heaven. But you need more than just hear the voice of your pastor. You need to know how to get to the feet of Jesus. And let the Spirit of the Lord talk to you, friend. Luke 10, 39. Let's talk about this for a minute. 38. Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also was at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, does thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. Now this is kind of touchy here. I know there's work to be done. I know there's floors to be vacuumed and grass to be mowed and, and, and a lot of work to do. But if we're not careful and that becomes our vision, we're missing everything God wants to do for us, friend. If that becomes our whole, if we're consumed by it, we don't have time to get in the presence of Jesus. Mar- now, now, you got to realize Martha wasn't down in some joint. She wasn't out in some worldly place. She was in the house where Jesus was. And yet she wasn't in his presence. And by that's touchy. She sat in the same pews. Was in the same house. But her, her focus was totally different. One wanted to draw nigh to God. And the other just wanted to take care of everything. Thank God for the Marthas. But why can't the Marthas in areas of their life find the heart of Mary? Oh, did anybody hear that? We need the Marthas. If we didn't need the Marthas, what would we do? If we didn't have the Marthas, what would we do? But why can't the Marthas, why can't we find the heart of Mary? I'm telling you, friends, slow down and get back at the feet of Jesus. Slow down and read your Bible again. Slow down and show up at prayer service again. Slow down and worship the Lord again. Slow down and build your prayer altar back again. Hallelujah. Got a, got a call today. A precious brother said, me and my wife, we're building an altar. We, 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 we're going to get a hold of God. We, we gonna, we're going to get at His feet. Hallelujah. Oh, we'll mow grass. We'll vacuum carpet. We'll drive a nail. We'll knock on a door. But we got to get at the feet of Jesus. Hallelujah. I wish somebody would help me preach in here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're, 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 we're not gonna, we're not gonna deliver the drug addict and the homosexual by going to college and learning how to do it. We're, we're not gonna heal broken homes by reading a book and learning how to do it. We're not, we're not gonna rebuke cancers by learning to say the right words or, or address the right way. But it's when we get at the feet of Jesus and we get in the realm of the Holy Ghost and we get caught up in the prayer presence of the Lord and somebody ought to magnify Jesus in the house now now, now she wasn't fighting sin she wasn't dealing with some horrible skeleton in her closet it was paying light bills and phone bills and taking care of babies and washing dishes and getting to work on time and keeping the family in order just the cares of life were keeping her from the feet of Jesus somebody ought to get mad stomp your feet a little bit and say self you got to straighten up you need the good part Hallie, I wish somebody would talk to yourself you might as well talk to yourself they saw your car in a Pentecostal parking lot they're going to laugh at you at Walmart anyway you might as well just talk to yourself and say self straighten up hallelujah you, hallelujah the devil couldn't get you back Back on drugs. He couldn't get you back in a mess. Now he's got you in a Pentecostal church where the glory of God's fallen and he's trying to get our minds so busy. We're not in the anointing. We're not seeking God. We're not getting close to God. But the devil is a liar. I said the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. I don't want to backslide in the house where Jesus is. I don't want to miss my visitation and be right in the house where Jesus is. I don't want to miss the Lord and be right in the house where Jesus is. Did you hear that? She was right in the house where Jesus was. But there's one thing is needful, and Murray hath chose that good part. My my wife has to watch me. Della make us a German chocolate cake. If we're not careful, that thing loses its frost, and I like the good part. You have to watch me and John Mark. We like the good part. 
said, she's chose that good part. Choose that good part today, friend. Get that good part today. Get that good part. I had a little old dream. God visited me in Virginia back in August. And, then, and, and I'd, I'd been up to seeking the Lord four or five.